How's it going everybody? David Hedge here, House Hedge Gaming, and today I'm going to show you how to play Reason for the Season by Chestnut Tree Games. Now this game was given to me by the great people there, so thank you very much for that. And it is a great little beat-em-up brawl game that you can see that can fit easily anywhere in your luggage, in your pocket, and it's a great travel game, especially during this time of year. So let me show you how to play this game where you get to pick characters, decide who is going to be the reason for the season, but you do have to deal with the big man in red himself to truly find that out. Let me show you how to play. All right, let's go over how to play Reason for the Season. And the first thing you need to do is figure out which icon you're going to be playing as in the game. So there's four different ones to choose from. You have Jack the Necromancer representing Halloween. Lucky the Fighter representing St. Patrick's Day. Cupid the Seraphim representing Valentine's Day. And Esther the Bomber representing Easter. So let's say I would like to play Lucky, the fighter, because hopefully that's what I would be during the game. So you will take your fighter, you will have a separate card for their health, and it's definitely going to show how much they're getting beaten up on during the calendar year. And you will set your health total to nine. You will also take a special deck of cards designated for that icon and shuffle it up. Now there's four different types of cards that you will find in your deck. You'll find action cards, which are basically your attack cards. You will find weapons that help buff up your attacks against your opponents. You have defense buffs, which are shields that will help you out during the game. And finally, you have instant cards that you can play against your opponent's actions. Once everybody has picked out their icon, it's time to set up the calendar with some nasty surprises from St. Nick himself. Now, since everybody's picked their icons, we need to get this deck taken care of. Now, this is the calendar deck. At the beginning of each player's turn, they'll be flipping over the top card of this and doing as the date says. Now, there are two different cards in the deck. First off, we have the date. It could be anything. So in this case, October the 10th, uh, Happy Canadian Thanksgiving, everybody will feast and gain one health. Some dates are good. Some dates are not so good. But there's also some minions of Santa Claus that are in this deck that will do damage and leave because, well, they're nice little minions for Santa Claus, but they're a pain in the butt for the other icons. Now, when setting this deck up, you will shuffle it up, and then the bad part about it is that you will take the bottom five cards, And then you will take one of three different versions of Santa Claus that you will be going against. You can either go against the Barbarian, the Cleric, or the Ice Golem. So let's say for this, we're going to have the Ice Golem Santa Claus, Chris Kringle, going into the bottom cards. And then you will place it on the bottom of the deck. So, you know, towards the end of the year, you will have to go against Santa Claus at some point. And we'll go over that in just a little bit. Now that we have the icons chosen and we have the calendar deck set up, each player will then take the top three cards of their deck and place it as their hand. And once everybody has done that, it is time to begin the game of Reason for the Season. So let's go over how to play a turn of the game. Okay, so to determine who goes first in the game, it's the player with the latest birthday in the year. Once that's determined, so in this case, it's lucky because eh, they're lucky, uh, then we go into the turns of the game. There are three phases during a turn. First phase is the calendar phase, where you get to take the top card of the calendar deck, flip it over, and do as the card says. So in this case, January 22nd, it's Lunar New Year, uh, discard one defense buff card that you have on the table, if any. So this affects the player that is flipping over the calendar card, but there's some that will affect all players. Uh, there are very few and far in between on this one. But in this case, it's the beginning of the game. Lucky does not have any defense buffs, so there's none to discard. So it's all good. After that, then you have the action phase where you get to play one card out of your hand unless something in here told you not to. So, you can play a weapon card. Now, weapons will go beside your character, and they will usually add attack buffs to your attacks. So, in this case, the Golden Gloves, 
Play this next to your hero. While in play, your physical attacks are plus two damage. And if you want, you can also refer to this number up in the corner. You can also play a defense buff. Now, defense buffs, again, they'll stay beside your fighter, and they're able to help take care of some damage. So in this case, with the Irish Champagne, play this card next to your hero. When attacked, you may discard this card to absorb one point of elemental damage. Uh, now, as you can tell, there are different types of attacks in the game, so you'll need to be careful what types of damage you are inflicting as well as what types of are being able to be dealt to you. Now, the next card you can play is an action card. Now, these are usually your attack cards. So in this case, this is a heavy attack. It's a physical attack because you have a little icon here and target any opponent. It deals two damage to that target of the attack. And you can also tell you got the little two here to help you out to remind you how much damage it is. Now, there is one more card that you'll have to be uh, dealing with and also be surprising your opponents with. And that is an instant card. Let me show you those. All right. In this example, let's say Lucky is trying to hit Esther with a heavy attack for two damage. Now, Esther has a card in their hand. Dodge. It's an instant card they can play on anybody else's turn. When taking damage, discard this card from your hand to avoid taking the damage. So Esther will be able to dodge the attack. That card will go to the discard pile. The heavy attack would go to the, the lucky discard pile. And then we would go to the end of Lucky's turn, which means they would draw back up to three cards into their hand and play would pass to the next player. Now, throughout this calendar year, all players will be attacking each other until one of two things happens. One, when you get down to the final few cards in the deck, then if you flip over the Santa Claus, or in this case, Kris Kringle, you will take their card, place it under at their starting health, and then you will take their deck and place it next to Kris Kringle. From this point forward, during the calendar phase, you will no longer be drawing the calendar cards. You will mainly be drawing from the Kris Kringle deck and this will be affecting what happens to you and other players throughout the rest of the game. This also can happen earlier if all other players in the game are knocked out. So say, for example, in a three-player game, your two opponents are knocked out, Chris Kringle gets searched through from the calendar deck, gets placed in front of you, and now you have to deal with Chris Kringle all on your lonesome. Now, play will continue each player using their characters playing actions, playing defense buffs, playing instant cards, and even using special abilities on their characters to get to a point to where one player will be left standing. Once each player has been defeated, and you take the final action to take out Kris Kringle and knock him out of the game, the last icon standing will truly be the reason for the season. Well, there you have it. That is Reason for the Season from Chestnut Tree Games. It's a quick and simple, easy game to play that fits in your pocket. The artwork looks amazing. The gameplay is, it's simple, it's easy, it's fun. It's a great opener for a game night, but it's also a great little travel game, especially during this time of year. And thank you to everyone at Chestnut Tree Games for sending me a copy of this game. And I cannot wait to try out Atomic Kaiju when that comes out. It'll be hitting Kickstarter later on this year uh, in 2024. It's hard to believe that 2023 is almost over. Then again, I should have looked at the calendar and the reason for the season game to find that out. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. If you like it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let everyone know the House Hedge Gaming is here for all of your gaming needs. So until next time, everyone, stay safe and take care, my friends.